This is a live demo of computer vision and visualizations for an implanted visual prosthesis running in real time on a NVIDIA Tegra K1 development board, the Jetson. Uh, what we've done is connected the Jetson uh, to our custom VR goggle that we use for psychophysics trials and computer vision evaluations. Um, on the front there is a prime sense 3D sensor with a color and depth camera and what a person wearing it will see inside a simulated prosthetic vision which I'll show you instead on a screen connected to the Tegra. And the things I'll be showing you now all runs in real time on this development board. So let me just zoom in a bit and lock the focus. Okay. So on the, on, the, on the top here is SPV or simulated prosthetic vision. This is what we expect a patient to see given a particular electrode that's implanted on the vision, uh, in a patient's human uh, vision system. Uh, the images on the bottom is the color and the depth image from our sensor and those things are processed in real time to produce this rendering of what we expect a patient to see. So let me just move the sensor around and point it at the world. So now I'm pointing it at the ground. You can see immediately that if you take a naive approach, the image on top is not very informative because uh, bionic vision in general, uh, pro prosthetic vision produced from implanted visual processes have very limited dynamic range and very low resolution. So this is a 25 by 25 electrode implant, uh, approximated, and you can see that it's basically just segmenting bright and dark parts. So this is actually my shadow waving into the camera. Now, what some, you can do some computer vision in between. So if you take the color image and you do a Laplacian second order uh, edge detector, you can find some, you know, some more useful features. So this is the edge of the couch in the middle. This is the edge of the couch in the middle. There is some objects on the ground, which I'm sort of moving towards. But again, because you know, it also picks up my shadow, so arguably it's not very useful for navigation and object detection. Also, a lot of objects on the right because of a lack of contrast. The usual problem in computer vision, you don't see much. However, what if we use depth data? So here is a what we call transformative reality. We are taking um, now depth data of the world and in real time fitting planes to it, sort of modeling it. And now you can see very clearly two objects on, on the ground. I'm kicking it with my feet. There is a chair, there is um, some uh, legs of the chair, and on the right, just a toggle in between. If we go back to the first mode, the binary thresholding, that doesn't see much, whereas if we actually look for non-planar regions in the image and show them, uh, we can make better use of the limited prosthetic vision uh, resolution. So this is showing non-planar regions. Just to give you a scan of the scene, this is a couch, okay. And the other interesting thing is you can actually see moving objects quite clearly as well. So you can see this is um, a person moving the chair around. Now, uh, if, you, if I go back to the very first mode, it's actually not, it's still sort of clear with moving objects, but not as clear as actually using 3D data. So this is what we're trying to do, we're trying to make literally every single pixel count. And if the person comes closer, we can also demonstrate a final computer vision mode that makes use of both the color and the depth image in the color image, we pick up the front, a frontal face, so we're looking for people looking at the patient, and in the depth image, we segment them out so that we can show the patient the gesture they're making. Okay? So let me just uh, turn the mode on. So this is a frontal face detector followed by a depth segmentation. So that's, you can see that's much clearer than if you were to just take a naive approach and binarize the image. Okay? And also, it's a lot clearer than showing the 3D structure of the world, which can get quite messy.